What's up? Welcome on in. Welcome on in. Welcome on in, guys. Happy Tuesday. Who is ready for an all new book club? I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I hope you enjoyed some time with friends or family or getting Liddy City off of No Filter Wine. Tonight, we're going to be concluding Holly Madison's book, Down the Rabbit Hole. It is the last week of our Holly Madison book club. And hopefully we're going to have Holly Madison on the podcast in September, or if not, hopefully very, very soon. What's going on? Hi, Jenna. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Maria from Chicago. Sarah Bahu's in the house. Annika, what's going on, Annika? Hi, Life with Bear. Mary Ann from Florida. What's going on, Florida? Hi, Mrs. Herc. Welcome on in to your first live, my love. What up? Let's get ready to rumble. Okay, so like I said, we are going to be wrapping Holly Madison's book down the rabbit hole. Chapters 14, 15, 16, and 17. Um, The discerning critic, you look fantastic, Zach. Looks like you got a nice tan going. It's all fake. It's all fake. It's all fake like Patrick Summers. Thanks, Life with Bear. You guys are so sweet with all your kind messages. Hi, Miss Loopy Lori. Okay, are we ready to break down this week's book club? We're going to start off with Chapter 14. Okay, so as we remember from last week, Holly Madison was getting ready to... She got an offer to join Peep Show, which is a show in Vegas. It's a burlesque show. She'd finally left the mansion. She was ready to start things off on her own. She broke up with Chris Angel, the magician, because he was really possessive and really controlling, and she was just ready to be done with him. So she was briefly staying back in Los Angeles with Mary, half-secretary, Um very briefly, but ready to get back on her own two feet again. Hi, Jenny. So this is where we're at now. Chapter 14 opens up and she's ready for peep show and it is serious business. Okay. She was super nervous about auditioning. She says that she was self-conscious because she only knew how to blend in like with the sea of blondes at Playboy and she didn't know how to be herself. She didn't know how to do things on her own. She, I mean, well, I guess because aside from being part of the harem at Hef's, she was also part of the trio that was the girls next door, right? So she never really knew how to have her own identity outside of being either, you know, being part of an entourage, so to speak. And even though people were starting to know her less as Hef's girlfriend and more as like Holly from the girls next door, she was still associated with Bridget and Holly and she was ready to kind of get her own thing going on. Well, it obviously worked out for her because she ended up landing the role the role of Bo Peep in Peep Show. And so the Shannon twins actually reached out to her because they were now dating half. They reached out to Holly and invited her to lunch and ultimately wanted to get her to come back to the mansion because they were claiming that his new main girl who replaced Holly, Crystal, they were saying that she was not good for him. They did not like her. She was a total B-I-T-C-H R-E-S-P-E-C-T. She ain't got none for me. So they said that she wasn't good for half. She was a nightmare. His health was deteriorating. And they were kind of alluding to the fact that she was part of the reason his health was starting to, to come. It was starting to like go down, down the rabbit hole. But Holly's like, nope, sorry. I ain't coming back to the mansion. I don't even think that you can try to convince me to come back to the mansion because I am Dunzos. I'm past that life. I'm over it. I suggest you guys get over it too because it's not the life that anybody wants to live. Crystal was apparently very threatened by Holly and she even threw a tantrum after Hef publicly stated that he um, that Holly was welcome to come back to the mansion at any point. Crystal didn't like that. It sounds like Crystal was very threatened by Holly. She was very jealous of Holly. And Holly's like, I'm just ready to move on and move on. She did off on to Vegas. So she officially moved out to Nevada full time and she was ready to pick up some of her stuff after her breakup with Chris. She still had some stuff in his safe. And so she was going to stop by, collect her things. And when she actually did collect her things, she noticed that there were a few things missing particularly the jewelry that he gave her. And she was like, well, that's kind of tacky. Like, didn't you give me this jewelry because I was your girlfriend? And yet here you are taking your jewelry back. 
Thank you, Michelle, 6322. Um, question for you guys in the live chat, though. Do you think it's tacky? Or question if you're watching the replay crew. Um, is it tacky to take your jewelry back if you gave it as a gift to somebody? Number one. And number two, is it weird to keep that jewelry if it came from a significant other? Curious what your thoughts are on her and her feeling a gift is a gift. Okay, Maria. Maria says a gift is a gift, so she should be able to take it. Uh, Annika says absolutely tacky. Sarah says it's tacky. So then, okay, it's tacky to keep the jewelry or it's tacky to, yeah, I, I think it's tacky to want to expect the jewelry back, right? Very tacky, not weird at all. Hella tacky to take it back. Yeah, I agree. If you're giving somebody the jewelry, like, what do you want it back for? So you can give it to your next girlfriend. I think it's strange. But anyway, she was like, you know what? It's fine. I'm ready to move on. She was now working in peep show. She landed the role of Bo Peep. And she was like, you know what? At that point, once I started doing peep show, I was very well taken care of. They put her up in a suite at Planet Hollywood. All of her room service bill was all covered. She said that she didn't even feel alone because there was always something going on there. So she could always, you know, find a party or a crowd if she ever, you know, wanted to go out at any point. And if she wanted to stay in, she could stay in. So she said that she wanted to extend an olive branch to Chris, though. And she didn't want any animosity because they were both living in the same town. They're both in Vegas. She's in Peep Show. He's got, um, what was it, Mind Freak? Was that his show? He had a show. I don't know if it's the same show, but I know he's been in Vegas for a while. But so he acted like Vegas was his town. So she's like, you know what? Let me extend an olive branch. Let me do the good thing. Let me say, hey, boo, let me reach out to you, invite you to my premiere party or the premiere party for the premiere of her show um, or her debut in Peep Show. And she said that she sent him a really nice text message being like, hey, you know, if you're interested, I would love to have you join, you know, whatever, whatever. Well, apparently Chris didn't get the text message. His girlfriend got the text message and she was not happy that Holly was texting her. So she ends up sending Holly this like scathing message about how she's some, you know, lower than B list, you know, girl that should be ashamed of her background. And she shamed her for being on antidepressants. And Holly's like, whoa, 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 this is wild. I can't have this the night, like my big night. I can't be taking this. So Holly decided she was going to clap back with a salacious message of her own. And so she shared some messages or one really salacious message in particular where she sent her um, the mess a message that Chris had sent to Holly. So basically showing that like, mm, look, he's still been texting me. So you think you're all big and bad as his new girlfriend. Sorry, homie. He's still been hitting me up, period. And so she went, she killed it at her first premiere night in Peep Show. The seats were, feel the were filled. The reviews were great. And she was like, she was a little nervous because she knew that there was a lot riding on the show because they were using her for publicity at this point. They were trying to capitalize off of her Playboy fame, her Girls Next Door reality TV fame. So they decided that they were going to go off and put her face on all of the billboards and hope that that would sell and hope that it would help kind of revive the show. And it did. It worked and she was killing it. Then we get into chapter 15, and this is where we see, we learn all about Holly's world, which was her E spinoff. So initially she was pitching a show to E, but they were really hesitant about a show centering in Vegas because for whatever reason, I think Vegas is really tricky to film a show. And I know that there were like issues with Lisa Van Vanderpump doing a spinoff for Vanderpump Gardens. So I think that the legalities of filming a reality show in Vegas are really tricky. And the concepts that the networks were being pitched, at least at this time, weren't very great. So the network was kind of like, oh, I don't really know if we want to do something about you in Vegas. So they initially wanted her, Bridget, and Kendra to be doing cameos on the new season of The Girls Next Door, even though they'd all left the mansion. They were looking to rebrand it with the new twins, the... Um, Shannon twins and Crystal, who is the new main girl, they were going to keep the show going. And even Hef was like, the show wasn't about Holly, Bridget and Kendra. The show was about my girlfriend. It's all about Hef's girls. And apparently it wasn't because I, I don't think the show did that well. But they 
the producers wanted Bridget, Kendra, and Holly to come in to help transition the audience over from the three OGs to the three newbies. And so Holly said that she agreed, and she agreed to have Hef and his girlfriends come to see her in Peep Show to open up the season. That way, there was kind of like a bridge crossover. So Hef was like, yeah, Holly and I are good. Me and my new girlfriends, we're going to go to Vegas, and we're going to see her perform at her show and we're going to be so supportive even though behind the scenes it wasn't supportive and holly said that initially she was hesitant but she was like listen it's going to be great pr for peep show i'm the new face of peep show they're putting a lot of eggs in this basket that at this point i'm just going to give it a go so she says that there aren't a ton of nice things that she has to say about crystal um understandably, because it seemed like Crystal was really threatened by Holly. And she also says that she didn't really watch season six of Girls Next Door, which is the season without Bridget, Kendra, and Holly, even though they did make a couple of cameos. But she said that she heard reports and snide jabs from the other girls that they would throw at Holly. And Holly was like, whatever, if you need to trash me to keep your show relevant, you do you. I'm doing me and I'm doing just fine. Snap, snap, pat the puss. So she thinks that they want to drama. The producers want to drama between the OGs and the newbies, but she wasn't willing to bite. She was like, I'm trying to live my life now. I don't want there to be drama. There shouldn't need to be drama because when we did Girls Next Door, it was fun. It was lighthearted. We were silly. Like it wasn't a show centered around drama. She also says that Hef would send letters to Kendra and Holly often about his disdain for some of their choices post Playboy and um, press interviews that they would give that he didn't like. So he would send them handwritten letters all the time being like, I didn't like this or I heard you said this or whatever. And I'm just like, somebody needs to teach him how to send a text message because why is he still writing handwritten letters in 2012 or 2013 or whenever this time or this era was? Um but Holly was thriving. She was living her best life with Peep Show. She ended up signing a multi-million dollar deal with them, which she was very proud of. And good for you, Holly. You do you, girl. And then season six of Girls Next Door ended up coming out. But they were only pulling in half the ratings that Kendra, Holly, and Bridget were pulling. And so ultimately, he was like, well, the show's not taking off. It's not going anywhere. So they decided to cancel Girls Next Door after its sixth season. And season six was a total flop. Even with the cameos that the three original girls did, apparently it didn't help very much because the show ended up getting canned altogether. And Kendra at the time had gotten her spinoff and that was doing really well. And it was self-titled Kendra. Um, And so because Kendra's show was doing well, they decided, well, let's give Holly a try. Let's see. And Bridget had her little beaches show, I think on like Discovery. I don't know. She had it on some little network. And I mean, let's be honest. We were really just interested in Kendra and Holly. Bridget's nice though. I like Bridget, but she was never really the breakout star of the show. So they decided to give Holly a spinoff special. So not a full show, but like a special um about her in vegas and you know trying to see if there's any interest in holly and her story with peep show so it went really well the ratings killed it and ultimately they ended up picking up a full season of holly's world which showcased her life in vegas doing peep show and it actually started to do better than kendra's spinoff in the ratings so it became one of the top shows of the network she did another crossover with Hef for his birthday, but this time instead of doing it on Girls Next Door, because at that point Girls Next Door had been canceled, they decided to film it for Holly's World, where Hef was in Vegas for his birthday party. And so Holly's like, oh, let me go visit Hef and, and you know, see Puffin for, you know, his birthday. I think he was turning like, I don't know, 80, 120. I don't know. He was up there. He's an antediluvian at this point. So... Girls Next Door was canceled, and Crystal was apparently not happy that they were going to be filming Holly's spinoff. And she's like, ugh, why is she coming to Hef's birthday party? Like, I'm the one that's banging him. I'm the one that deserves cameras on me. But obviously, girl, you must not have been that good in bed because you clearly weren't that good on camera because your reality show got canceled trying to ride on Holly's coattails. Period. (sighs) Then we get into Chapter 16. And in chapter 16, this is where Holly's world continues to blossom because it was renewed for a second season. And this is when Hef was like, okay, I need to get back on television because it was really helping Playboy and we need to keep Playboy relevant. So he ended up pitching the network a show called The Bunny House. And it was about former Playboy bunnies that lived across the street from the mansion 
but it ultimately never got picked up because it wasn't that great of a show. I think he was trying to capitalize on the fact that, you know, okay, fine. If I'm not the main center star, we at least need a reality show and let's do it with girls that we really like. If you don't like my girlfriends, like let's mix things up. And that didn't seem to go anywhere. But a couple of the girls that were set to star in the bunny house ended up getting pulled over and placed on Holly's show, Holly's World, for season two. And this included Jade, who was Brody Jenner's ex-girlfriend that we saw on The Hills. So I don't know if you remember the final season of The Hills with Kristen Cavallari after Lauren Conrad left. Brody was dating um, a Playboy bunny. She had dark hair. Her name was Jade. So I think she was going to be part of the bunny house, but obviously the network wasn't interested. So they ended up putting her over on Holly's show and made her one of the cast members there. So Holly's beef with Crystal, however, it kept rolling on through. She says that Crystal was giving single white female vibes and she was copying everything that she was doing. Even her pictorials weren't very great. Um, and it just, Holly was like, I don't want anything to do with her. And she keeps talking about me and she keeps trying to ride off of my fame and my celebrity. And apparently Lifetime ended up greenlighting a Playboy wedding special with Hef and Crystal. So that way we can see their wedding all come together and Hef settles down and finds the wife of his dreams. But she ended up bailing five days before the actual ceremony. So it ended up being, they changed the concept from it being like a Playboy wedding to Hef's runaway bride. That's what they called it, Hef's runaway bride. And so Holly and Kendra were called in to make a cameo and they really only did it as a favor to their producers who are also producing Kendra and Holly's world. But Holly reveals in the book that apparently Crystal left over prenup disagreements. She wasn't happy with what Hef was going to be leaving her in the prenup. And she ended up running off with her secret boyfriend, Jordan McGraw, who's Davin, or sorry, Jordan McGraw, who's Dr. Phil's son, who's now married to Morgan Stewart on Nightly Pop. He's married to her and they have two kids. But back then he was secretly dating Crystal and she ran off with him. And after she left Dr. F not Dr. F after she left Hugh Hefner right before the wedding. And I'm like, Ooh, this girl is sneaky, 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 sneaky. So the special ended up flopping altogether because the public just wasn't interested in Hef or Crystal especially not their relationship together. I don't think Crystal was really good at captivating an audience. I think people could tell that she was a total bitch um, and most likely just a gold digger that was dating half. Whereas like, I think with Holly, whether she convinced herself or, you know, was just a great actress, I think she was good at convincing us that she was really in love with half and wanted to go all the way with him. And then obviously Kendra was a really great character and I think uh, reality character and I think Bridget just kind of balanced everybody out. So Holly's like, well, the show obviously flopped because not only are people not interested in their relationship, but they also failed to mention that Crystal had a secret boyfriend that she ran off with. But I'm thinking that's probably just because Hef wouldn't allow that narrative to be put on the show that he got left again by a girl who was dating another guy outside of him because then it just looks like they're all gold diggers out for, you know, his money, his fame, whatever he wants to say he can offer them. But Crystal ultimately in, ended up coming crawling back on her knees, probably her favorite position. Um, she came crawling back to half after all her media attention died down and people were no longer interested in her story and she didn't know how to keep her fame going. So she's like, shit, I guess I had a good deal there. I guess I'm going to go back to the Playboy Mansion. And so her and half ended up getting married quietly without doing the big splash like on Lifetime, especially since the Lifetime special flopped. That I don't think anybody was really interested in picking up their wedding special after that. And there, I would imagine there would be way more interest in her being the runaway bride rather than they would. there would be any interest in watching this love story, especially since she had already left for another guy and now clearly was just coming back to the next best option that she had available to her, which was going back to half. So season two of Holly's World continued to deliver, though, in the ratings, but ultimately 
E ended up canceling Holly's World and Kendra because the network was like, we need to get away from this Playboy affiliation. It's too trashy. We don't want bimbos running the network. And so they decided after they canceled Girls Next Door, Holly's World and Kendra were also canned as well, even though they were actually doing pretty well in the ratings. I mean, Holly's World was getting like up to 2 million views a week which is crazy because like housewives today, which are super popular, they don't even get 2 million views a week. Granted TV has changed. Ratings have changed. Like all of that's completely different today compared to what it was, what, 10 years ago, but still like 2 million in cable ratings. Like that's pretty, that's pretty strong for the network to be so confident that they were going to be okay without it. I watched it all the time. Really? You watched Holly's world. I never saw Holly's world. I watched the girls next door and I watched Kendra, but I never watched Holly's spinoff. I don't know what it was about Holly that I was never really captivated by her. But in 2011, E came back to Holly and they offered her her own E! True Hollywood Story. I used to love True Hollywood Story. I was fascinated because they were documentaries about different celebrities, their past. They did their own interviews. People who knew them did interviews. I loved True Hollywood Story. I wish they would bring it back in some sort. Um, I love the new podcast. Oh, interesting, Lushy Steam TV. I haven't caught the new podcast, which is the, um, what is it called? Girls Next Level, where they go back and recap their time on Girls Next Door. But, but yeah, so they offered Hollywood or Holly her true Hollywood story. And she said that she was initially reluctant because she's like, oh my God, I don't want to do this again where I have to be deduced to Playboy and they're probably going to dedicate my entire true Hollywood story to my life as Hef's professional girlfriend. And I want to be known for things beyond that. I want to be known maybe as like a reality star or as just kind of my own person. So she did it mainly because the producers kind of forced her hand is the way she described it. But ultimately she was happy with it. And she said that the reception was really positive and that people were able to relate to her and identify with her, which I thought was great. Cause I think in reading the book, I like Holly a lot more than I did back in the day. And I think even when this book came out, I was kind of like, really Holly, like now you're just being thirsty. Now you're just being ungrateful, blah, 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 blah. But now the, the dust has settled and time has gone by. I'm actually really enjoying Holly and I'm liking the book and I can't wait to have her on the podcast. There's no guarantee of that, but I have been in touch with her team and we've talked about it. And obviously she saw the Jenny McCarthy interview and she loved that. So I feel like there's a possibility. We'll see. I'd love to have her and Bridget. I don't want Kendra on. I used to like Kendra the most of the three of them, but not anymore because Kendra doesn't really want to talk about Playboy. Understandably, but I'm also just like, there's nothing to really talk to her about then. Then we get into chapter 17 and chapter 17 is the final chapter of the night. and Or not the, of the night, but it's the final chapter of the book altogether. So in chapter 17, after Holly's World and Kendra were canceled, we ended up greenlighting Kendra on top, which was essentially a similar concept to Kendra on E, but now it's Kendra on top and it's airing on Wii TV, which is basically just a smaller network in comparison to E, but I believe they're, they're all still in the NBC family. I actually don't think Wii TV is around anymore. Didn't it get canceled? I know like style network ended up going away. Is Wii TV still around? Does anybody know? I feel like it might not be. But anyway, the, oh yes, Steven and Kristen back to the beach podcast. That's like a popular trend right now for everybody to go back and like rewatch their old shows from back in the day. That was crazy with Hank and her dad and her mom. Yeah. When they brought in Kendra on top, that's when it was focused more on like the drama and less of like the fluffy, lighthearted reality TV. But producers asked Holly if she would participate in Kendra's new show. And Holly was like, yeah, I'm open to it. We've always supported each other. I support Kendra. Kendra supports me. And I thought that that was great. They all, she's, she's like, we are friends. We've always kind of been friends. We always had this unique bond because we were in this unique circumstance together, living at the mansion and being on this show and then kind of having to find our own identity after the show. But so she was like, yeah, of course I'll support, I'll support uh, Kendra. And Kendra's brand, though more mainstream than Holly's, um, which Holly admits and owns up to, she's like, obviously, I know Kendra was a little more of a mainstream celebrity, but her reputation and her brand were becoming more of like trashy tabloidy. Because I think by the time Kendra on top came up, there was drama with her mom that they wanted to focus on. Obviously, all the Hank Basket cheating rumors were being addressed on Kendra on top. 
so her life was centered around drama and less around like fun, you know, and I think the world of reality TV was also starting to shift more towards like salacious drama scandal. So Holly says that Kendra basically has been handed everything that she's ever gotten. So it sounds like there may be like a little bit of resentment there, but she's like, listen, Kendra was 18 when she met half. And then a year into it, she ended up landing the girls next door, which catapulted her into fame. And then, you know, then she had Hank basket and her spinoff show that came immediately after girls next door. So she's like, Kendra always got what she wanted. She had Hank and she had half to take care of her. So she's like, Kendra's never really had to work work for anything whereas holly really came from nothing and worked hard to eat, become hef's girlfriend because i mean we remember from earlier in the book she was talking about how she didn't have a place to stay and living at the playboy mansion she was like at least i have a roof over my head you know so she claims that the producers wanted to film a cameo for the show where kendra ends up making an appearance in peep show which holly was against she's like i'm not gonna i, I believe the concept was to have Kendra in the show for one whole week and Holly was going to, you know, help Kendra train and get ready for it. And then eventually, you know, Kendra would take on the show and they're like, it probably won't fully come to fruition or maybe Kendra will get a night, but we want the storyline to be focused on it being like a one week gig. And Holly was like, no, she said that peep show was her baby and that she had given everything to it. And she's worked really hard to perfect it or to perfect her role in it. And that she didn't want it to be another playboy thing or a thing that was attached to her playboy past and bringing Kendra in would do just that because then it's Holly and Kendra. And I believe that the, the argument she kind of lays out in the book is that she didn't want it to look like you know peep show was just trying to capitalize off of hef's girlfriend or girls next door and since she got it and then kendra would immediately get it so quickly afterwards that it just it made it seem like they were only getting these opportunities because of playboy when that wasn't the case because holly worked very hard to shed her old image and you know kind of gain this this new um this new identity and this new gig and this whole new brand for herself. She also said that Kendra was incredibly diff difficult to work with. And Holly didn't want to bring that energy to peep show. Cause she said that Holly or not Holly. She said that Kendra would throw tantrums and she was always late and she just wasn't ideal to work with. And she was a bit of a diva at times. And Holly's like, I'm not like that. And I don't want that energy around my coworkers. I don't want that energy on the set of my show. You're not bringing that to peep show. Oh. She said that she was willing to film a cameo on Kendra on top, but she wasn't willing to bring Kendra anywhere near her Vegas show. So Holly ended up coming down to LA or like outskirts of LA to film at Kendra's house for a little catch up scene where they're like, Hey girl, how you been? What's going on? Oh my God. I remember when half had to take a double shot of, of I almost said Valtrex, <laughs> of Viagra. Um, maybe Valtrex too. I wouldn't be surprised. But anyway, so Holly came. She said they filmed a little catch up scene where they got to chat about their lives now. And then she's like, and then I had to drive all the way back. She didn't personally have to drive, but she had a driver. And the driver drove her all the way back to Vegas, which was a five hour drive. And it was right before she had to get ready because she had a show. She had uh, her Vegas show that night. I was like, damn, you came all the way to LA just to film Kendra on top and then have to go all the way back to do your show. But that's what it was. They did what, eight shows a week? So she said she was always booked and busy, but said that they wanted, like after the fact, they wanted to film a pickup scene where Holly calls Kendra to set up the scene for Holly coming over. And so she wanted to be like, hey, girl, what's going on? I want to come visit you. How you been? And then Kendra's like, hey, girl, I've been good. Come over. I got some tea. And she's like, you got some tea, like some chamomile tea or some like half tea. And Kendra's like, both, girl, come on over. Hank was sleeping with somebody else. And Holly was like, OMG. So... But she said that every time that they were scheduled to, or she was scheduled to call Kendra to film this pickup scene, that Kendra wouldn't answer Holly's phone call. Kendra also wouldn't text Holly back. And she's like, that's weird because Kendra was always really good about texting me back. And we seem to be super friendly. And it's just, it's weird that we have to keep rescheduling this scene over and over and that Kendra seems to be avoiding me for some reason. And so Holly says that she knew that Kendra was bothered about something, but clear because she was clearly being passive aggressive, but she couldn't tell exactly what had bothered Kendra. 
The producers, however, kept trying to push this peep show storyline for Kendra on top, and Holly kept declining. They're like, it should be for the, the opening uh, episode of the premiere episode. No, it should be for the finale episode. And they kept trying to maneuver in any way Holly could, or any way Holly would be willing to do it. And Holly was like, nope, I'm not budging. And then she says that when it actually aired, Holly writes about how she felt like Kendra was bothered that it appears that Holly had a really big successful career and that didn't appear to be the case for Kendra and Kendra didn't want to be compared to Holly looking like, you know, not looking as successful as Holly was in comparison with them next to her, even though she was literally on her own show. Like Kendra had her own show. But Kendra then gave an interview to a tabloid where she said that she's no longer friends with Bridget and Holly and that they're not, they don't keep in touch and they're not close. Holly was like, whoa, what the hell? Like, I didn't know. I didn't know we weren't close. I didn't know that we weren't friends. And she said that she had texted Kendra and she's like, why are you doing this? Why are you being fake right now? Like, that's not cool. Like, hello, obviously we're friends. And Kendra's like, who are you? I don't even know you. She's like, I don't have any real beef with you, but I hate the narrative that we're actually real friends when we're not real friends. Kendra told Holly that they were just work buddies. Like, they just had to be, like, they had to be forced together for work, but that she never really saw Holly as like a real friend. And Holly's like, well, that's interesting. That's news to me because I thought I believed that we were actually friends. I believed that we were caught up in this weird playboy existence together and that we were oddly bonded somehow, but I guess you didn't feel that way. So piss off. So Holly said that she deleted Kendra's number and she's like, I'm moving on from her altogether. And she's like, get a nice life, Kendra period. So she shortly after ended up meeting her husband, which she said all the stars aligned and things were looking up and Holly decided that it was time to move on from her peep show. She did it for four years and she said that they offered her a shit ton of money, but that she was just ready to kind of move on to the next. She said that there wasn't much more for her to do or grow or learn on peep show. And after four years, she's just like, I'm ready to have a life again. I'm ready to like do my own thing. I'm ready to have a schedule that I can make. That's not super regimented around doing eight peep shows a week. She said that she also had no time to do anything because of their schedule. And she was just ready for like a reset, a refresh, a reboot. Let's do it. And she said that she wrapped up her final show and around that time, she was pregnant. I believe she wrapped her final show when she was five months pregnant. And Angel, who was one of her co-stars in Peep Show and on Holly's World, apparently Angel was begging the producers to hire Kendra in place of Holly. And Holly found out and Holly was livid. She's like, what the hell are you doing? And he was like, oh, I just thought it'd be like really good publicity. It's great press for you. It's great press for Kendra. It's great press for the show. And she's like, no, that's not cool. Kendra would not be able to hold my position, number one. And number two, like, why are you trying to make this a Playboy thing? If Kendra got it after me, then it just makes it look like the network or the um, the showrunners actually are just chasing the Playboy fame. And she's like, and that's unfair to me because I actually worked hard to get this gig in this role. Ultimately, Coco, who's Ice T's wife, remember they had Ice T and Coco? Uh, I, they had like a, a reality show. So she ended up replacing Holly as the new headliner, but it didn't do so well because the show ended up closing like after a few months and Holly's like, well, all good things come to an end, but at least I got to walk out when it was out of high. He ended up reaching back out to Holly to film a special about her pregnancy and about her early, early mom life and having her baby and kind of taking this new step in her life. I think because they saw the popularity around Holly and they saw the popularity around Kendra when she made her pivot to getting married and having a baby that they kind of wanted to follow that with Holly because obviously there was money there and there was interest. Even though they made the mistake of getting rid of all the girls next door Playboy content years earlier, they clearly wanted something because they needed to keep the network alive. And Holly loved it. She's like, it was really good. It was so easy to work with them. It wasn't like girls next door. They didn't want to exploit me in the same way. But months later, she ended up marrying Pascal Rotella. I th he owns, what is it, electric something? Like a, a festival, an electric festival. I guess it's kind of like an EDC festival where everything's like neon and glow sticks and all of that stuff. So he, she ended up marrying him and having her baby. He's the father of their daughter. She gave birth to Rainbow Aurora. And a few months after giving birth is when she married Pascal. And she says that the whole thing was 
the beginning of her happy ending. And that's how she ends the book. She's like, I wrapped my Playboy days. I wrapped my Girl Next Door days. I wrapped my reality TV show days. And now here I am as a wife and as a mom. And I'm ready to sail off into the sunset. Now, as we know, after the book, she ended up having a second child. She had a baby boy. His name was Forrest. She had him also with Pascal. And unfortunately, though, they their marriage didn't last. They were only married for four years before they ended up divorcing. They both claimed that it was super amicable. Um, they divorced, I believe, back at the end. I believe they split in 2018, but the divorce was finalized at the beginning of 2019. So... By 2019, the marriage had ended, but they seem to be very good co-parents. I haven't checked up a couple of, I haven't checked up on them other than, you know, a couple of little tidbits to see where they're at. So I don't know if there is any beef with them, but yeah, they didn't work out. But she has two beautiful babies. She has Rainbow and Forest. You know, she's got a great friend in Pascal. So I think she's un- I think she's winning. She got her second book, which is called The Vegas Diaries, that she ended up publishing. So it sounds like she's doing she's doing all right. She ended up launching her YouTube channel, which was going or is going really well. Then she ended up launching her um, new podcast with Bridget, which is Girls Next Level, which is going back and revisiting the Girls Next Door days. What's going on, guys? Wow, 118 watching live right now. Hopefully, you're enjoying Book Club. If you are, smash the like button. If you want more, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell button if you want the notifications to come in when we go live. I love doing Book Club with you guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed Holly Madison's book. I found it to be very entertaining. We learned a lot about the Playboy days. Next week, instead of doing an actual book book club, I'm going to be recapping the full Secrets of Playboy documentary series. So next Tuesday, we'll be going live at the same time, 5.30 p.m. Pacific, um, 8.30 Eastern. But instead of recapping an actual book, I'm going to recap the full Playboy or Secrets of Documentary Playboy series, which originally aired on A&E. Um, Beyond a and it is also available, I believe, like on Hulu Live. I'm watching it currently on Peacock. So if you guys want to watch it over the next week so that we can recap it next week. I'm not going to go into detail into every single episode because there are 12 episodes. Um, so we have homework, watch the series. Well, no, I mean, it's the same thing. It's like with book club, right? You guys can either read the book or you don't have to read the book. You can just kind of come here and I can recap it for you. Um, if you don't want to read the book, similar with the, the documentary series, we just had Jenny McCarthy on the show. She talked about it. She talked about Playboy. So I just thought it would be fun to kind of recap that. So we'll be bringing that down next week. Love book club, love book. Oh, thank you, Marianne. Thank you, Annika. Thank you, Aaron. Wow. She wanted babies. And then she was, when she was with Hef, I'm glad she got her babies. I know, Sarah. I'm glad she kind of got that happy ending. So much for my happy ending. Sasha, do you think Rinna will quit or get fired? Either way, I don't think Rinna comes back next season. I honestly wouldn't be surprised. I know we're divvying out of book club and somebody's asking about Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. But I think at this point, I think a few of them are going to quit the show. I don't see Kyle coming back. I feel like Rinna might be done. Um, I don't know. I think Erica is going to be in a really tough position because I think she really needs that paycheck. But at the same time, like the show is just unbearable for these women at this point um, that it's like, I just, I can't, I can't understand, you know, the visceral, like it's a reality show. It's not that, it's not that deep, you guys. Um, that the way these women are treated and berated on social media, even Garcelle, I could see Garcelle quitting the show. You know, I don't think this is fun for any of them anymore. The only one that I think actually enjoys it is Sutton um, at this point, but also Sutton's the one that gets the least amount of heat on social media because everybody loves Sutton, um, which is wild to me that everyone's like, oh my God, these housewives are so problematic when Sutton has had some of the most problematic behavior. And people still really like her. So I think there are a lot of double standards. But to answer your question, Sasha, I don't think Rena comes back next season. I actually would be surprised if Kyle comes back next season. Um, I don't think Diana comes back next season. I don't think she'll... 
I just don't envision a world where they come back. I just don't. Kyle, Diana, Rinna, I think Erica might be on the fence. Dorit might be on the fence as well. Um, I know that Dorit, I haven't even revealed this on the podcast, but I do know that Dorit was almost not going to return this season. And she almost walked away from this season. Um, I can see Garcelle quitting because I don't think Garcelle's even enjoying doing this show anymore. So yeah, Crystal, I don't think, I think Crystal will be fine with the show or without the show. I guess Kathy kind of enjoys it. She's not really in the mix or we'll have to see. I think she might be willing to come back. But I mean, Kathy doesn't want to film full time, so they can't really rely on Kathy. And Kathy played her whole thing with wanting more money this season. Um, ultimately, I think they earned I think Kathy earned her paycheck because Ren is really going to hold her accountable. But I mean, think of how much how boring this Aspen trip would have been. I mean, we don't know what Aspen's actually going to give to us, but we know that there's going to be a shift in the Fox Force 4. Um, we know that, you know, there's going to be a lot of drama. There are going to be a few different blow ups. But I think Aspen would have been a really boring trip had there not been Rinna, Erica, and Diana. So as much as everybody wants to hate on them, they definitely made for one wild season that's about to blow up. But also, it's kind of crazy that, like, Sutton's had so many problematic moments. Now we know the allegations against Kathy Hilton, where she's been super problematic by dropping racial and homophobic slurs up in Aspen. Um, and listen... We did book club. We dove into House of Hilton. We saw that there is a history of these things. So it very likely could check out that these accusations against Kathy are actually true. Um, so, yeah, I just. I don't I think at this point we've killed Royal House as Beverly Hills, which sucks because going after last season coming into this season, I think it really was at its highest. And I think after this season, the show is really going to crash and burn because some of the key players, I feel like we burned them out this season um, that without them, because you're going to come in with what a, a predominantly like new cast. We, we've already seen with Dubai that, like, we're not interested in any real new cast members, you know? Kathy is the Karen with the most money. Yeah, what did Kathy do? Um, I'm not going to dive into all of it here because I've done so many videos on it now, but she throws a tantrum in Aspen. She ended up getting in a fight with, like, a DJ and some security guards in Aspen off camera. It was when cameras were down. They had wrapped for the night. Um but she ended up like throwing a tantrum about Kyle, um, ended up getting in a fight with some of the staff there and apparently was very derogatory towards the staff there and dropped some homophobic slurs and some racial slurs. And so those are the accusations against her at least. Um, but again, we read House of Hilton. We dove into the Richard sisters history. It's very likely Garcelle may want to may want the check without the real show money. I think at this point, they're all going to start to look at other opportunities to jump ship with. I honestly do. I, I think Kyle is good. She, her Mauricio has the new Netflix show. So if she wants a little TV time, she's fine. She has her new movie, her new Halloween movie with Jamie Lee Curtis that's coming out later in later this year, actually, right? Doesn't it come out this October? Um, so yeah, I think Kyle's set. Kyle doesn't need the show anymore. Rinna, I don't think, needs the show anymore. Um, I think Rinna's ready to move on from the show. I think Erica's the only one that needs the show, but it's more because she needs the paycheck because of all the, you know, legal bills that are stacking up. But I think if she leaves the show, I think some of the lawsuits might actually die down because they're going to be like, oh, she really does have no money. So um, that's for I stand. Let me read through some of these comments. Um, yes, Rinna either, Diana either. Yeah, I don't really see any of them lining up to return next season. The Medusa hate to Rena, Erica and Diana is so sick. It's just dark, you know, it's dark. It's problematic. I think it's worse than anything that they've done on the show. I mean, I guess Erica, you can hold to a different standard because there's all of the attachment to like the orphans and the widows and the Tom Girardi embezzlement scandal and all of that. Um, but I just think the fans are, they've turned it so dark at this point. Um, 
I think Erica can come back since she needs the money. Yeah, Erica's the only Erica because of the paycheck and Sutton because she likes the fame and she likes the attention that she's getting from it. But here's the thing. I think if Sutton comes back, I don't know if they're going to protect her in the edit moving forward because at this point, I think she's gone too many times over. Oh, God. Um, Dorit won't be back. Can't wait for Aspen. I hope they don't edit it weird. We're going to have to see how Aspen does get edited. I don't know if Dorit will come back. Like I said, she wasn't going to return for this season, and it was a last-minute decision for her to return altogether, and then she ended up getting hit with the the home invasion. And listen, Dorit's given us some moments, right? We had the homeless and toothless. We had the Jamie Lee Curtis wind chimes moment. So I think Dorit's definitely... Um, giving us a couple of fun, lighthearted levity moments that we really enjoyed. So I'm not hating Dorit. I think she may come back. Um, but again, if she was willing to walk this season, then I think she may be willing to walk and not return for next season, especially if Rin is gone, Kyle's gone, and Erica's gone. Then she really has what she's going to stick around and try to kiki with Sutton. I don't think she really likes Sutton. At least she's genuinely friends with the other women, you know? Yes, then we can watch Erica go to jail. Well, Maria, I don't think that's ever going to happen because she hasn't been charged with anything criminally and she never worked a Girardi Keys. So you can keep wishing, my love, but she has nothing to go to jail for. No criminal charges have been filed against her. It's been two years at this point and there's nothing that they've even been able to attach to her. So keep dreaming. Jen Shaw, on the other hand, it's actually going to prison, federal prison, not just jail. I don't get the Erica hate. Tom treated her like arm candy. Listen, she was a prop for Tom. That's been proven at this point. What's up with that name of her foundation? Well, it's not her foundation. Let's clarify. Homeless and or homeless, not toothless, right? Yes, homeless, not toothless is not Dorit's foundation. It's her dentist's foundation. Um, that she's supporting. So it's a charity that she's endorsing, but it's not her actual charity. I'm surprised Sharon Stone's out here supporting the homeless and toothless. That was kind of random. I don't know if I believe that, to be honest with you. Back to Holly and Kendra. I would like to know what Kendra thinks of Holly saying that she is open to have Kendra on the Girls Next Level podcast. Kendra doesn't want anything to do with it. If you watch Kendra's interview on um, Heather McDonald's Juicy Scoop podcast most recently, um, I feel like she just wants to be done with Playboy altogether. She doesn't want the association. She doesn't want to be involved in any of it anymore. So it's... I think she's just ready to be done. I don't think she'll ever come on Girls Next Level. Also because she doesn't like Holly and she doesn't like Holly's characterization of what happened at Playboy, which is interesting that Bridget has such a different... I think Bridget's recollection of things is very similar to... Ken, or Yeah, Kendra's recollection of things. I think they have very similar experiences. But listen, Holly was a lot closer to half. Holly was there a lot longer than Bridget and Kendra. So it's possible that, you know... It was just different. So sad to hear Erica, Rinna, Diana are not returning. Well, that's not official. Haters will get the... Haters will get a rise. Get it. It's not going to be an interesting show without them. A less interesting... It's going to be a boring flop. Like, if they remove those key players, the show's going to tank. It just is. They're going to be delusional and say that it's good without them, better without them, just like they're all trying to be delusional and say that Dubai is actually good when Dubai is tanking in the ratings. Dubai's finale bombed. It didn't have Beverly Hills as a lead in last season, and it bombed. Like, it barely got, what, 400,000 viewers, which was less than the week before. Like, in what world does the finale tank worse than the episode before the finale like that's like not a thing that happens but people are so delusional dubai sucks it does suck like let's be honest about that so yeah you can fire rena and erica and diana and kyle and they're like yeah it's gonna be so much better without them great cute we'll see when the ratings bomb but by all means, let Sutton lead the show. I like Sutton, by the way. I feel like I get ripped apart for not really liking her, but I like Sutton. 
Um, but yes, I think um, I am planning on getting Holly Madison on the podcast. Hopefully I'll be able to get, um, hopefully I'll be able to get Bridget on as well. What do you think they can do to save the show? I think the show's done, honestly. I don't think there's anything they can do to, to fix any of it anymore. I think Housewives, I've said it, I started saying it last year, Housewives has a shelf life. In five years, Housewives is going to be dead altogether. You know, Housewives is dying and it's dying fast. I don't think they're going to be able to revive New York. Um, now that we know Ramona is most likely not going to be part of the legacy show, we don't have Bethany part of the legacy show. I think it's all going to crash and burn. Notice how Hef gave the twins and his wife, Crystal, their own pictorials, but never did for Holly, Bridget, and Kendra. Yes and no. Holly does address that in the book as well, Monique, um, that they got pictorials, but they were regular pictorials, whereas Holly, Bridget, and Kendra got celebrity pictorials. So there's, you know, that's a difference. Homeless, not toothless, may be a funny name, but homeless have very weak teeth. Listen, I agree with you, Sarah Bahu. Thank you for the super sticker. Love you, Sarah. I agree with you about homeless and toothless or homeless, not toothless. However, it is a terrible name, but it is a great cause. You know, They're, they don't have like medical and dental are things that the homeless don't have access to in addition to housing and food and water and all that stuff. But like those are crucial things that they need access to that they don't have access to. So the charity itself is good. I love you, Zach, and I love Holly. If you get her on the podcast, that would be completely out of this world amazing. I agree, Aaron. I'm hoping to do it. I actually think maybe we do need a little bit of, of a break there, though. Um, since she's been doing so many podcasts lately and she's already talked a lot about, about Playboy. So maybe we get her on like at the end of September or something. We'll see. We shall see. Um, would you watch Heidi Montag, Holly, Heidi Mont, Mont, I'm assuming you mean Heidi Montag as an agent. She got her license. Uh, Spencer's been pushing that. Yeah, I would like, I would definitely like to see Heidi Montag on reality TV. I love Heidi Montag. Real Housewives is like MTV's real world, a thing of the past. Yeah, it's expiring. They're going to keep it going as long as they absolutely could, but I think we're we're definitely losing. Yeah, great cause, so stop mocking it. Listen, girl, the, the name is a joke, so we're going to keep mocking it for sure. We're not mocking the cause. We're mocking the name of the charity. Let's not mistake the two. Obviously, we want to support the homeless and we want to make sure that there are less people that are toothless. So we support the cause, but it's okay to poke fun at the name because it's a terrible name. We're not poking fun at the people. I love Heidi Montag. I've had Heidi Montag on this podcast. I love Heidi too. Maybe I'll invite Heidi back sometime. I would love to do Heidi and Spencer, but I like Spencer. I think he's funny. He's super into the hills though that I'm kind of like, mm. Do you think the New York Housewives will work? No, I think, again, I think Housewives is dying. I think it's dead. I think there's not going to be, once the shows burn out, I don't think there's going to be a second life to them. I don't think we're going to be able to revive them. And I think this season we killed Beverly Hills. Not the show, or not the women, not the network or the casting directors. I think as collectively the audience, the crazy delusional fans on the internet have killed the show. There's no reviving it. This is probably, you know, some of the best Beverly Hills has been considering it's had some weak seasons in recent years. Last season and this season were solid. Um, Beverly Hills had a good cast in France. Yeah. Which France? They went to France twice. There was a France with Lisa Vanderpump and then there was a France without Lisa Vanderpump. <laughs> so I'm not sure which France. I really love the season five cast of Beverly Hills. When they went went to France, it was good. Yes, but they went to France twice. What? Um, Bridget and Holly are really into Halloween. Maybe you can do a tea time interview and have some fun autumn experiences with them. That would be really fun. I would love to do something closer to Halloween. Maybe I can even try to get Kyle Richards on the podcast if I can get her to do some press for Halloween since the third movie in the trilogy is coming out, the final movie. That would be fun. What do you think the next phase of reality TV is? I think it's going to be more unscripted. I think it's going to be leaning more into the like escapism reality TV, you know, where like Netflix was doing a good job of it. Um, like the, um, like the Zac Efron show where like he was going and exploring different things. I think that sort of unscripted television feel good unscripted television, I think is going to come back. 
I, I think people are going to be kind of tired of, listen, I'm trying to get Erica on the podcast. Guys, DM her and be like, Erica, you need to go on the No Fields podcast. We're trying to make it happen. We're trying to schedule it. I promise. But let keep reminding her that she needs to come and do the No Filter podcast. Listen, it's all in the works. It's just a matter of timing at this point. I would love to hear tales from the Playboy Mansion. We just did tales from the Playboy Mansion. We had Jenny McCarthy on. We're going to get Holly Madison on. We just finished Holly's book. We're next week. We're going to be recapping Secrets of Playboy. So, how long will the Kardashians last? I think they've got a little bit. I think their Hulu show is going to give them a little bit more life. I don't think it's going to be a ton more life. Um, I think they got a couple good years left in them. They're not done, so. They got a couple years left in them. We're on season two. I don't really see them going past a season five on Hulu. Like, I think season five is like the max they can do. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put in a good word for you, Zach. Thank you, the pretty mess, if you must listen. We need to make it. Guys, tell Erica she needs to come on the No Filter podcast. Let's do it. I would actually like to have Rinna on, but like in two years after Housewives, when she's like been able to kind of recalibrate and then we can be like, hey, remember that crazy year 2022 when you were spiraling on the internet? Let's talk about it. All right, guys, let's wrap for the night. This was fun. I had a blast chatting with you. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to hit the like button on the way out. Subscribe if you want more book clubs or tea or we go live every Thursdays as well. So smash the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell button. That way you get all of the tea all up in those notifications, period. Great live chat. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks, Monique. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Red Sox. Thanks, Coffee Buzz. Who else do we have here? Mom to Chris, one mic two. Um, Mia, hi, Mia. Amber, hi, Amber. Jenny, Char. Oh my God, you guys, I love you. Pretty mess if you must play our song. Oh, what was it? Um, I'm breaking news. I ain't scared of shit. I'm fabulous. I'm flaunting it. I'm fabulous. I'm flaunting it. Mm, mm, I'm still hot. I'm breaking news. I ain't scared of shit because I'm fabulous. And I'm flaunting it. I'm fabulous. I'm flaunting it. Mm, mm, I'm still hot. Mm, mm, I'm still hot. I love Rena so much. Thanks, Zach. You're the best. Thank you, guys. Love you. Appreciate you. Um, I do think Jersey is going to be good. I think Jersey and Potomac will probably carry Housewives till the end, um, to their end. I think New York is done. Beverly Hills is done. I don't know if OC is ever going to really be able to come back at this point. Um, so, all right, guys. I love you. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful night. Uh, I will talk to you all very, very soon. Love you. Mean it. Bye. Good night, guys. Good night for now to you, my friends.